Hello, welcome to Fantasy Bite Size. Um, look, this week I've got a special guest, as you can see. Not only is he one of the UK's best singers and songwriters, he's also pretty decent at Sky Fantasy Football. That's why he's on as well. Welcome to my guest, Paul Heaton. Paul, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks very much for having me on, Dan. Thanks for, uh, thanks for giving up your time, buddy, and coming on. Um, I speak to Paul a bit. He's a great guy. I'll just say next he's here. Um, so I've got Paul on tonight. I'm just going to talk about his team briefly for a bit because he is good at fantasy. And then we'll do some general questions and, you know, have a little chat about Paul as well. Um, so you've had a pretty good start in the fantasy football this season. I think I jotted down earlier, 515th. That's right. Going yeah. pretty well. Going much better than it does normally. I, I normally start up in the thousands, you know, like quite often 100,000. And I usually come down and down and down all the way through the season. And, you know, the last few seasons, probably, uh, apart from the odd blip, I've, I've finished around about the thousand mark or, or so. But that's been after a really bad start. So touch wood if I keep my eye on it this year, because you see the I go away on tour or go into the studio and you don't get those little bits of news uh, you know, that, you know, Ronaldo's being dropped or so-and-so has injured his ankle in training. So usually a tour for me and uh, the studio is the time I tend to drop down places. But apart from that, yeah, I've been at home, you see, so um, I've managed to keep an eye on it. Yeah, you started all right. You're, uh, what, you're fourth in the Sheffield United League at the minute. I think you normally do pretty well in that. I think you were second last season in that overall. Um, got yeah, your team. Right, yeah, I sort of got picked at <laughs> the last minute. Right, at the I end. Sort of yeah, had some bad luck yeah. at the end. I think I remember things just weren't happening where they. I think you're bringing in players and um, weren't scoring and stuff like that. But you had a good season. I got so I got your team here: Sauer and Goal, Diaz, Rudiger, Cancelo. Yep. all great the players there. Rafinha, he's obviously started well. Ben Rama, Gray, Gallagher. Obviously, they've all done well because you're five hundred and fifteenth. And then Salah, Kane, and Antonio. So that's a nice team. They got zero point three million in the bank. Uh, what if you've only used three transfers? That's a that's a bit annoying because I'm uh, I'm two thousandth and I've used five transfers and you're about thirty points ahead of me and your team's in a lot better shape. But it's looking good. Obviously, it's another international well, break yeah. now. Yeah, Sorry. I think with me, quite often I I make bad captaincy choices, and this time I haven't. I've been fairly solid on them. Obviously, this weekend just gone. Uh, there wasn't a lot that went right for anybody, really, but I still managed to leap up a few places. I have a book as well. I'm sure you've got hundreds of books. I have a book that I keep, you know, to check on my side and look at. Uh, it, 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 I'd spend a lot less time on it now, but I used to spend hours. So I look at the predictions for the results and what I think they might end up on, you know, as and look at other people's sides and stuff like that. So. I take it quite seriously, but it's not as bad as it used to be. It used to, it's a lot quicker now, you know, on the internet with a lot more advice. Just Twitter, you can go on. There's discussions like yours and people, as we said, a, a, a fantasy football hub and fantasy football scout. They're a lot more open with their information. And it's it's quicker. It used to be um like there just basically wouldn't be anything. I remember like you wouldn't even get the lineups, would you? It sort of be. Oh, I sort yeah. of just remember going to teletext and you'd see, I don't know, or I don't know, maybe listen to the radio or something. But now everyone's on Twitter an hour beforehand and there. I think it was yeah. even on Saturday. Ronaldo's not going to start before the team sheets have come out. People are putting online. Yeah. And you're like, oh, right, I'll take him out of my team and stuff like that. Whereas before us, you'd sort of just come to kick off and you'd either, oh, Ronaldo's not started yeah. or something like that. So there's so much information out there now and yeah. it is unreal. But yeah, it is great. I like that fantasy football stuff, FF stuff site where he's got all the grid and he will, the fixtures so you can really plan yeah. ahead. So um, that's good. But your team looks good. I can't, no real issues there, is there? Like they're all... Not really, no. Don't really need to... Obviously you've got them couple of Arsenal games coming up if you're going to bring an Arsenal player in. Yeah, but... If it was either Arsenal or Villa, I probably will bring... An Arsenal player, and I mean, maybe Ben White. I'm not sure. I've also I'll... been looking at the uh, that Johan Wisser for Brentford because he's so cheap for midfield. Yeah, and I've seen him in his first game. I thought he looks electric, and then uh, he scored, didn't he, on Saturday? I think so. I, I'm yeah, looking he did. at him. I'm looking at Ben White as well. Yeah, I've got Ben White, but he ain't been getting the passing. Like you, I know you like a, a player who gets the passing bonus and stuff like that. We talked about Rodri in the past, who uh, is great for that sort of thing. He ain't been quite doing it 
this moment. I've got him and he ain't been doing it. But yeah, I've got Ben White. Just been nowhere near on passing, so I'm a bit not really hopeful yeah, for that. them games. Yeah, again, information-wise, I think it's great that you can go on uh, the Sky site and it's got the stats so you can look across the Arsenal back line and say, right, well, it could be him and and, and ignore somebody like White and get the right the right move. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know where that Arsenal one. Yeah, I just. I don't, I'm just going to stick with Ben White. But if anyone is bringing someone in, I'd. I don't know. Do you want to have Aubameyang really? Like, do you want to take like? No. You're not going to want to take out Salah, Kane, or Antonio, are you really? So. No, not yet. Do you use a transfer? Two transfers out and then back. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe another option is the way. Um, but yeah, your team looks in good shape. I think you're. Um, I wish I had your team, to be honest. I've got, I've got Ndidi in my team. He's now injured and out. And uh, I've just got problem after problem. But you've had a flyer, so a bit annoying from my point of view. But... I've been a lot more careful. Uh, and I think, as I said, that's probably not being away on tour and making these snap decisions. You know, like 20 minutes before you go on stage thinking I'll buy him. Yeah. Uh, but so... That's the work. I think that's the work when I'm, I don't know if I'm, not to say, but if I'm out with the kids and something, and something happens, and you're thinking, oh, what shall I do? Like, and it's a panic. So yeah, to to have a plan is always good. Um, I think that's it for football. We've got some questions for you as well. Had some questions of yeah. some people. Um, so you had number one album last year, Manchester Calling, great album. Um, I know you've been away this year. Have you written anything as you normally do when you're away? Yeah, I managed to. Looking back, I've been quite busy songwriting. I managed to get away to Portugal. Uh, with my wife to do the lyrics. Uh, I wasn't able to go to my usual place, Holland. Uh, that was being closed up. I think it's just reopened. And me and Johnny, the guitarist, went away to Bamberg in Germany uh, and managed to do some writing there. So I've got quite a bit done. And as soon as this tour's over, I'll be going in the studio in Manchester in, um, yeah, sort of end of November and start rehearsing for the, the album next year. So you'll, uh, you'll aim to have one out next year? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know you're busy now because you're touring now, aren't you? October, November, got quite a few dates coming up. Yeah, yeah. It feels it's. We did a gig about two or three weeks ago, and it felt really strange, but really nice, quite warming. You know, like I think it's nice to see people together, even though you know, it, it, having people packed in like that has got, you know, you've got to be sort of. You, I suppose you think of it quite cynically, and you're thinking that is this going to work, but. You know, everybody's health was good and we really enjoyed it. And we're hoping the same with the tour. Obviously, with the tour, we've got to be careful. We've not that's to cancel all the after shows, you know, so we're not mixing with too many people. But apart from that, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's good. I did see that picture. Someone put a picture on Twitter, come, or maybe you retweeted it, but someone that took a picture of the crowd. Was it at the, the bowl you were at a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. That just yeah. looked amazing, everyone out there sort of thing. And I thought, God, yeah, to yeah. see that many people... In one yeah. place, it's like, God, and I'm, look, I ain't been to anything for a couple of years at least, so yeah. I think, oh, I'd love to get to see some live music and just be in a crowd again, and yeah, it would be and great. You, and with all due respect to my fans, they're of COVID age, do you know what I mean? <laughs> they're, they're, they're my age and younger, so it's not like, I've seen the, you know, the photos and the videos of young people going out and having a great time, but it's people my age, you know, and you know, and I'm quite a bit older than yourself, but it's really nice to pe see people in their 40s, 50s and 60s going out and enjoying it because I think more them and the generation older, the people who were really worried about it and also obviously died from it. So that made it uh, that made it nice too. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm looking for your Wikipedia. So it says on your Wikipedia yeah. and a quote, you played over 700 games, competitive games at junior and amateur level, often insisting on driving back from gigs on a Friday or Saturday night to attend Saturday and Sunday matches. Is that true? I take it it is because it's on wiki. And then, uh, and what was your position? Um, it is true. And it, even if you look back through the old Beautiful South um, tour dates, you will usually notice that we're playing the weekends up north, you know, like say Bradford on the Friday, uh, Manchester on the Saturday and then I'd be able to drive back after the gig uh, and I played uh, I started as a junior started off as left back and I played centre half all the way from the age of probably 15, 16 and centre half and sweeper really, I was a small centre half um, 
Gary Mabbott style, I would say. You know, like sort of tough for my size and, uh, you know, reasonable speed. But yeah, it was, I was brought up in a football fam family, you know, that we, that's all we did is play football Saturday, Sunday. My, my dad ran football teams. My brother still runs uh, junior sides and, and is involved at, uh, at amateur level. His sons are as well. And I also managed, after I stopped playing, I probably managed another five, six, seven seasons of a team. So, yeah, it's in me blood. It's in me. It's impressive that you never consider sort of going pro or anything that you just love playing. I just love playing. I, I find it, <laughs> I find it quite annoying. Well, confusing, you know, because this, that's the door. There's so many uh, people in the pop industry who seem to say, oh yeah, I could have been professional, I got, but I got an injury, I got a knee injury or whatever. And I, I just think, well, why? I mean, I, I, I didn't ever consider playing professional. I just considered playing the whole of my life. Why wouldn't you play the whole of your life? What, what have you, what's your relationship with football? If you just said, all right, I, because I wasn't pro, do you know what I mean? It's, it, I find it confusing. I, I think it's, there's a bit of um, there's a bit of lying going on in the yeah. pop world. You know, like he, should, he could have been professional. I, I've, I'm the only person I've met in pop who has played at an ordinary level through their whole life. Do you know what I mean? I played county premier on a Saturday, which is you know fairly good East Riding County Premier, and on a Sunday I played in Division One Hull Sunday League for like the same team for 19 years. And we started off in uh, League Three and ended up in Division One, which was, you know, the second one down out of 21 divisions. So it's a decent standard. And just loved playing football, you know, loved getting muddy and uh, and it was my life as well as music, you know. You should have uh, you should have got involved in the soccer raid. Then they could have done with you then, because I see some of them playing. I think. Yeah. Oh, well, talk. not now. I'm 59 no. now, and uh, the as soon as I, I my I mean, I know a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you move from midfield back into defence as you, as you get older. That was that's absolutely nonsense, that. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I lost my pace, I did the opposite. I moved into midfield because I couldn't bear to be beaten for pace, you know, yeah. being the last man sort of thing. Horrible. And I, um, people get, you know. Go on, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Um, I did see on your Twitter last year, year when you were doing that, who's this with Paul and everything like that. I saw, I saw a picture you put up. Of you in a changing room with George Best. Um, All right. Yeah. Who was the best player you've ever played with or against? Was it Best? Um, strangely enough, I can't remember much about that day. I've actually got a video of it somewhere, or it was, um, but I can't, I've been struggling to find it. Yeah, George Best was brilliant that day. Who stood out to me was uh, Frank Worthington. Uh, because Best was, uh, I was sort of used to seeing how good he was. Um, the other player who stood out, who, who I thought was incredible to play next to, on because I played in a few of those sort of games, was Gary McAllister. Um, and I just couldn't believe uh, his age, because he was, he, he's, uh, I don't know if he's a similar age to me, but he felt as though he was like my age or or younger. How hard, How far he could hit the ball with no backswing at all, you know, just pinged it you know like a, a great golfer does right onto where he, where he wanted it to be so yeah there's a few um uh, but yeah i think uh, frank worthington and gary McAllister are the ones i've really noticed doing things you could never dream of doing do you know what i mean that's good and during the 90s you were on football italia on channel four like as the pre-match guest a sort of expert weren't you really because i know you do watch a lot of like foreign football and everything like that how did that come about getting on to doing that show because that's a that was a great show and everyone sort of always remembers that the great days of the 90s and stuff like that it was a brilliant show i think it's it's looked back uh through with real affection and going on the program um they were just like they were if you know what i mean you know, like they were really nice to their guests and uh, but how they got me is that for a very short period of time i wrote a, an italian column for shoot magazine um, only maybe two or three uh, editions, but they picked up on that and maybe another interview where I said I'd been seen to Milan, etc., and just said, "Look, would you like to come over for a match?" And they took me over there, and it was, yeah, really, really, really good. I loved the bit 
that James Richardson used to do with the newspapers, you know, where he'd sit in a, sit with a, a croissant table. or coffee in that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, brilliant. And he was a really, really good presenter and sort of made the show, really. Yeah, that was a great show. Um, I did it also, I was going to say, because you watched obviously Italian League, that had some really good players in it. Like there was just, I know we spoke last year about Maradona when, um, when he died, but so many great players in the league at the time as well. I went there, I didn't know if who, who was, if you had a favourite or. Yeah, there was, there was, it was incredible. It was really good because there was a restriction on the amount of players you could have. So um, Milan had the three Dutch and uh, uh, Inter had uh, uh, two Germans and I think Ramon Diaz. And um, in fact, three Germans after Klinsmann came. But there was, yeah, probably the the players are in Italian football watch Baresi by a long, long way because um, in Italy, the, the... the job of stopping somebody scoring a goal is as important as the person who scores a goal. That's the sort of thing you have to remember. And um, because of that, and because of the incredible expensive signings that were going on, you know, like Napoli had Carnavali and Maradona and, and so Baresi and, and Ferrier Inter, et cetera, had this enormous pressure on them, especially when at home, to stop you know, Maradona, and I used to love watching her, and it was, yeah, and it was almost like a Toreador, like, you know, with a ball, um, but yeah, I would say the best ones I watched were Baresi, Maradona, Van Basten, maybe, Rijkaard, uh, and a little bit later, Clarence Seedorf was incredible at Inter. That was, I remember watching that show, and that, they just had some amazing players, didn't they? It was such a sort of iconic sort of time, so, um, yeah that was great but yeah a lot of people were asking me about you being on that uh i've got some random questions and stuff so um some of the guys who watch the fantasy show so they want to know if you had any sheffield united players in your team last season i'm guessing probably more so the season before rather than last season <laughs> yeah too late uh, there wasn't anything going on uh point wise i think mcgoldrick was getting the odd um odd assist or the odd goal but we weren't scoring and we were conceding not conceding a massive amount, but um, the season before, I think everybody jumped on Lundstrom, didn't they, for a few months because he was getting uh, a few goals, the odd goal, and he was cheap. Henderson. Uh, so I think I think... So, sorry, I just remember yeah, Henderson because he was he was yeah. cheap, weren't he? And um, yeah. he was great Henderson, for you. Lundstrom. Um, but there wasn't. Yeah, I think they were the only two I ever had, Henderson and Lundstrom. Yeah, Hen- I, I think I'd Henderson most of the season. He was great. Yeah, um, yeah. Talking about the blades, how do you think they're going to do this season? They're not sort of start of the best, are they really? <laughs> um, no, we 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 had a, we had a particularly bad lockdown uh, for a start. You know, the eighteen months were pretty disastrous, um, and we've come out of it. There's a lot of um, a lot of people sort of quite angry about everything, really different things. You know, the way it was handled, and you know, uh, I mean, as a club and and getting rid of Wilder or keeping him so long, whichever you know. Um, and we've, uh, you know, obviously uh, replaced him with our new manager, who I like. Um, I like particularly like the loan signings we've got. Uh, that they they're really really important uh, for us. But I, I'm I'm not a great one for wanting to go into the Premiership until we feel as though we're ready. I really do think that it's worth, and sort of Norwich City have proven it maybe a little bit this season again. That it's sometimes worth waiting a couple of seasons and building a sort of momentum up and I just yeah so I won't be bothered I'd like us to do well I want us to win every match obviously but I would be a little bit frightened if we if we were right up the top pushing for it you know um, I just uh, like Norwich at the moment bottom everyone's going on about them and stuff like this they have had some tough games but I just think oh, just <laughs> we seem to go up and come straight back down but we get the money yeah. and I think the club's pretty well run don't know if you know Delia or anything yeah, yeah. but it's it you know I'm quite happy with how it is. Really, go up, get some money, keep going, and it seems to be yeah. she's all right, isn't she? So phew, that's just how it is, really. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, let me get to another question. Sorry, Paul. It's all right. Um, what is one like? What are your favourite TV shows, or the best thing you watched recently on Netflix, or etc.? I was just talking to my wife, Linda, about this. <laughs> we, we watched so much stuff, we were struggling to even remember, you know, because I think like a lot of people, 
during lockdown we were glued to Netflix because we couldn't either couldn't go out or you know perhaps didn't feel safe enough or shouldn't go out because uh, you know we had COVID. So uh, I really really enjoy I've enjoyed the Gone Fishing program. Um, you know, with Bob, uh, Bob Mortimer. And yeah, Paul he's Wyatt. funny guy, isn't he? And, and weirdly enough, that's one of the few things I watch by myself. Um, uh, the things we watch together are Superstore, the comic, the American comedy, Family Guy. Really liked, um, there was a, uh, we, we uh, watched a lot of Dutch and German and Belgian stuff for some reason. And we really enjoyed Undercover, the first series. And then the second series, it went a bit stale. And then they did a film and the film was really good. So yeah, loads of stuff. We're, we're very sort of peaceful, very down to earth, gentle people, but we end up watching the most violent <laughs> stuff you've ever seen. You know, like drug, drug runners cutting each, each other's throats and we're going, Ooh. and because we're so quite staid, it's quite shocking for us. And like, so we're just like, whoa, look at that. You know, because that's not our life. So uh, yeah, anything that shocks us in like quite, I think, I don't know how she's, she's over the other side of the room but maybe she's got me into a bloodthirsty stuff like taste in terms of um you know like uh, what I watch but yeah bit of comedy bit of sort of you know like gangster stuff Dutch German stuff a bit of everything really yeah we watch a fit my we end up watching things like Bake Off or Gordon Gina and Fred and stuff like I don't know if you have to suffer that as well but <laughs> yeah um what <laughs> your wife's in the room so I think how you answer yeah. this what's the last thing that annoyed you uh, <laughs> she's laughing. <laughs> the last thing that annoyed me. I, uh, I don't know. Nothing really annoys me. You've been out in the car, anyone cut you up, and you're like, what are you, yeah, what I was are you talking doing? About, I, I, want, I was sorry, she, I'm still I'm so, half talking to you now. Before we was on our way to, uh, to a friend's house to drop the bicycle off, and I said, uh, I don't get angry because I only started driving when I was 55. So I don't really get angry at other, do you know what I mean? I haven't got any, and also I don't have to be anywhere for a particular time. I'm not like, so when people ask to come in, I always let them in, right? But I don't like it when they don't let the next person. I just think, I, I, I said to stop driving like a Tory. I don't mean uh, Linda, but you know, like <laughs> I've let you in, you let somebody, you know, like let it go on to somebody else. So I, I get annoyed at things like that, but not, not much. I, I'm one of these people who saw, lets his anger out in, in his songs and I'm quite bitchy in my songs and get into, get my teeth into things when I'm writing. Um, yeah, but. Um, well, I was going to say, um, I think it was on the last album, wasn't it? Your eldest daughter was singing on one oh, of the yeah, songs. No. Is that a, is, you know, is she going to follow in your footsteps or is that just a one-off? No, I don't think she will. She's, she's, a, um, she's at dance college in Leicester and she wants to be a dancer. Um, it's a very, very hard industry to get into. Um, but that particular song, I just said, how oh, do you fancy singing on it? Because it sort of needed a quite an innocent voice on it. Uh, but she's not got any, uh, she's got a nice voice. She's got good, you know, she's got a good ear, but she's got no ambitions to stand in front of anybody and show off. My middle daughter has gone from one extreme to the other recently. She's just uh, trying to learn bass at the moment and, guitar but she's got no patience for it a little bit like I was but she's just gone to you know like sixth form college and a lot of people there are, you know in bands and I think she might give it a go at some point she's got all the sort of punky outlook and stuff like that so maybe her you could, but not, just, you could take her on tour playing a bit of, you know get her in there with bassist <laughs> I'm not sure if I'd trust her on tour she's 16 and last last week she she got drunk and <laughs> Fell out of a shopping trolley and dislocated her shoulder. So, oh no, uh, she's not in the good books. So she's oh, not no. ready to go on to. No, not oh, enough God. of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any new music in particular that you like? New bands and what sort of you know? Do you listen to a specific station each day or? Um, I listen. I, I, I'm probably quite weird in this sense. I listen to a lot of new music, but I don't listen to the radio. I look it up on online. Yeah. I've kept, this is very boring, but since 19, about 1978, I've kept my own top 20 of other people's songs every month. So each, each month I'm just working towards that to fill the top 20. Uh, but like recently, I don't know, there's, um, I've been listening to sort of, sort of quite 
weird country stuff like Pokey Lafarge and Charlie Crockett, is it, or Crocker? Um, I listen to a lot of rap, like D Smoke's new album and Tony Minio, I can't remember. Um, there's a band from Leeds called Yard Act, I quite like, and I did hear them on the radio, that was on Six Music. Uh, but yeah, I'm just constantly listening. I spend most days, Friday, tomorrow morning, I get up and I shall just immediately uh, stream all the stuff that I've been, you know, like I've read about. And then if it's good, I'll buy it. And that goes into the top 20. But oh, nice. it's very, very boring, but it's something I've, I've done for a long, long time. I'll um, got another one. So um, what, would, what do you think it would be like to be starting out with music now rather than when you did? And, you know, I sort of think it must be a bit weird now with no real record sales, because I suppose most of it's Apple, Spotify. Yeah. And yeah. I'm guessing that's where your money would have been doing the CDs and stuff like that. Whereas now you must just mainly be touring, I'm guessing. Yeah, the, it, it would be really, it's really, really tough um, compared to how it was. Um, the touring is pretty much the same, apart from a lot of the venues, smaller venues have closed down. A lot of the pubs have obviously closed. And um, my first gigs were from small venues and pubs. So that's gone. But yeah, on top of it, as you say, the actual income from records, you could sell, you could be on say Radio 1 or uh, Radio 2 or Six Music's playlist, um, you know, get 100,000 downloads and get very, very little money. And on top of that, a lot of the bands who are signing record contracts, they're now being asked to give away their T-shirt money and have a contract for that as well. Oh, so when they're on tour, and they're not making as much money on, say, merchandise as they would do, because some of the record companies, not all, are taking money from merchandise and they're not getting the same. So record companies are also trying to, you know, scrape up more money that, because obviously they're getting a lot less. Bands are getting a lot less. And, yeah, it, it's tough. And I, I, we were all, in, in my day, in the sort of 80s and 90s, we were always dead cynical of bands who used their music for adverts, do you know what I mean? Because I always say no chance. Right? But now I would say it, it, for a young band, it's probably the best chance you've got of getting paid for what you're doing. So I, I say, yeah, just do it because you're not going to get money elsewhere, you know. Especially if you uh, get on there, who is it, John Lewis? They they pay out some big money, don't they? I think yeah. if they use yeah. one of your songs on That's there. Right. Any, really, any of those adverts, you, you know, you, adverts like a record can take off. The other thing, obviously, that young bands have to look at is things like TikTok and, and the way that a, a relatively short, meme-ish type use of a song can also explode the song into... And I've noticed it like with artists like... Uh, I can't what you call... Uh, is it Pink Pantheress and Remy Wolf to a le lesser degree. They're making shorter songs now. They're making uh, two-minute, two-minute, 20 songs. Um, and I think... I wouldn't say they're doing it for TikTok, but they're, they're aware of that and aware of how that can sell things quickly. Mm, yeah. I, I suppose that's how I suppose younger generation want it. Don't they? Sort of, they probably don't want a four and a half minute song, do they? If they're sort of over in two minutes, brilliant, then on to the next. Um, got a question for you. And I know we spoke about this before. Are you ever going to do I'm a Celeb or Strictly Come Dancing or Celebrity Gogglebox? You said you watch like telly. You and Linda could be on that. Well, you know, I'm a Celeb. I can see you in the jungle. I sure you can see, yeah, not at my current size, I won't be in the shower. Um, I've been asked to do loads of things, actually. I have been asked on I'm a Celebrity a few years back. Um, and I, I talked, so I got an email from them. They said, you, you're guaranteed 365 days of tabloid expo exposure. And anybody who knows me just knows that I don't ever like really doing anything that isn't to do with music, you know, I don't like to be in the papers. I, I like to promote my songs. Yeah. And I, I'm one of the few people I think, I'm, my songs are more famous than I am, do you know what I mean? People quite often say, oh yeah, I know Rotterdam or Perfect 10 or whatever, but they wouldn't know what I look like, which is ideal. So I don't like the idea of doing that, but I've turned down things like that pop star to opera star. And I can't, I don't think I've been asked to do Strictly or anything like that. Uh, turn, I turned down, was it, yeah, Perfect Day? Do you remember that charity record? Was it for children in need? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I was offered an honorary degree quite recently from a, a, a university. 
I didn't want that either. I just thought it was cue jumping. So I, I'm just too contrary, really. I, I think I'd be all right on I'm a Celebrity if, the, you know. I, I think know. you'd win it. I honestly think, I'm not just saying <laughs> it because you're here, but I think because you're such a dude, I just think, I just think he's brilliant. Do you know what I mean? Because you sometimes they put people in there, don't they? And you're like, God, he's a, wow, well, he's, you know, or, you know, yeah. you know, they're a bit unsavory. And you think, I just think you'd win to a dude. And only ask you because I'm, I remember speaking to you about it and then I was like having a look through the betting thing and you were on the list and I thought well if he says he's in I can you know I think you were 40 to one I thought that but you know but I think I think it'd be brilliant on that <laughs> when 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 people are on it and I'm sure there's been some nice people on there who've not behaved very nicely because when you're hungry and tired yeah some true people get rapidly, which I can do but I'm not sure <laughs> my wife's nodding in the background sure right no but in general, what I do, what I would most likely to do is just go quiet and go back to my bunk because I don't like all these people gathering around. You know I don't like eating with other people. I'm happy with you, but I don't like, you know, oh, yeah, let's all have some meat and like sing songs. I just, that, that's just not me. So I'm not so sure if I would be very good on it. I might, I might have some amusing moments. And I'd definitely be, I think it would highlight my eccentricities. Uh, to a quite a nice way but other than that yeah I don't really I wouldn't wish it on my kids that and also the final thing sorry I'm, I'm rattling on no, you're I don't fine. like the idea of you when you're on that program it's watched so much that you you become more famous for being on that program than you do your own record thing you know like yeah I like it yeah outweighs anything you've ever done it's a bit like being on a, a I suppose a, a really popular soap for uh, two months and I think uh, I wouldn't like to, to people to see me as a bloke from I'm a celebrity you know what I mean? yeah I get you especially yeah. the bloke who smashed somebody on the head with a pan <laughs> <laughs> um, couple more questions did, did you ever I take it you had a job before you started in the, the house Martins yeah yeah I did in fact most of those sort of first few songs about uh, on London Nil Hall 4 things like Happy Hour and hopelessly devoted to them. A lot of them were in reference to the job I had. I left school and went uh, to work. You know, I didn't go to university or anything. I went straight from school into an office to just like a tea boy and worked there for three years. Um, and yeah, it was, it was all right. I had some good mates there, uh, but it was, it was pretty soul destroying really. Just people sort of shouting at you and telling you you're late, telling you you're scruffy, telling you you're, you made the tea wrong, you know, all this sort of stuff. Uh, but I didn't mind, it didn't bother me. I wasn't sort of like, but then I just thought, no, I've got to get out of here. And then I worked in um, a school for the blind. It wasn't actually school, a home really, for blind people for a year. Uh, and then I moved to Hull and formed the house lines. Nice. Uh, I just thought I'd, I've had enough and that sort of kick-started me. I was determined after working in a job that I didn't like for so long that I'd uh, do something I did like and I thought I could do, you know, and properly give me all to. And that worked out and you had a, like, great luck. I think that is important to do something that you do. Like, I love my job. And I, when it's yeah. like that, it doesn't seem like a job, does it? It just... Exactly, yeah. So, um, yeah, that is important. Uh, got a couple more. What, what's your favourite meal? Uh, my wife's paella is really nice. And also, I've just, I don't do much cooking, but I make a sort of salmon salad. Um, I, so I've just made a haddock and salmon salad for the two of us. I really like that. I really like, yeah, just fish. I think it's ace. Yeah. Nice. And we've just got another last one. What do you think of Boris Johnson and the current government and the handling of COVID, Brexit and the petrol shortage? I was saying that's a joke. We'll skip that. Yeah, you could go on, couldn't you? I, well, it... <laughs> I was thinking about this. It remind, actually reminds me of, you know, imagine if you had uh, somebody come to you with, with their uh, fantasy football side and you just said, well, you know, plan ahead, do this, do that. And they said, no, 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 don't worry. I don't need to plan ahead. I've got this, I've got that. I've got the best players and this bluster of, you know, I'm going to spend more money. I'm going to win more matches and just kept on. And you, you'd be thinking, why, why aren't they just planning? Why don't they just look? four or five fixtures ahead and do that and this person has ignored you and suddenly at the end of this season this person's finished last or near the bottom and uh, by then we all realize that uh, it's not a listening person 
is not a planning person. It's a person who's going to get themselves into a, a deep hole. And, and that's what I think we're seeing. I'm not one of these people who chastises people for, you know, voting for Brexit or voting for, uh, you know, and I realise they're getting information from a different place I get mine from and they've got a different way of, you know, uh, working it out. But I do think, and I don't, and I think it's important not to say you did this, you did that, you know, like, but I do think people are drifting, hopefully, they're drifting to the opinion uh, that is he trustworthy? I, I mean, I, I, I feel as though I know he's not and, and his government isn't. And also they got rid of so many ministers, so many professional politicians who didn't agree with Brexit. They've all gone. So they've basically just got the Brexit characters, you know, in, in very, very high positions uh, and uh, of public office. And uh, then they, I don't think they're going to... It also reminds me of the Titanic captain, you know, the... Um, was he Edward, whatever he's called, Edward John, somebody or other. And the, and the band played on, didn't they? Yeah. This, this sound. I, it's just, there's just that sort of like mentality where bluster will get us out of it. Confidence will get us out of it. I suppose it got him into it, into the job. So, you know. Yeah. It's a mess though, isn't it? All this, like the petrol it's thing awesome. is just. Yeah. We were, to, we were talking today about uh, getting a tall pig and uh, like saving one of the pigs and putting it on the tour bus and taking it with us on stage. But we decided against it because the bloke who does likes, likes eating them too much. And we thought bits would go missing overnight. So yeah, it's very, I feel sad for people working in the different industries, you know, like I went in and got petrol cause I had to get up to Newcastle and the person behind the counter just looked shot, you know, like through worry and people obviously were, you know, that their desperation to get petrol was all poured onto her sort of thing and working by herself, you know, late at night, I just thought, and I feel sorry for the pig farmers and sorry for the pigs and so, you know, it's just an absolute mess, you know. That petrol thing is... All... Sorry, Paul, you go. Yeah, most of all, people who, who are, who's, uh, you know, gas and electric bills are going to go up whilst losing their universal credit. Oh, you know, yeah, I've seen that. It's gone down, a, down, gone, but down half, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, around here, you know, like just up the road, yeah, it's going to hit really hard. Um, a lot, big parts of Manchester, I'm sure everywhere, you know, it's going to get hit really, really badly. Uh, yeah, very, very tough. And that's why we enjoy fantasy football so much, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's why we need them to start scoring to take you away from everything for a while, isn't it? Um, Actually, yeah. That was all the question I had for you, Paul. Just want to say thanks for, thanks for coming on. Um, brilliant guests. Pleasure sure everyone will say and um yeah thanks for your time and coming on yeah i look forward to um i look forward to you to catching me up and overtaking me because i think the amount of work you do for everybody you deserve you deserve it I th I'll, I'll try to get there so what do i say i'm about 30 points behind you so yeah. hopefully hopefully we'll, you we'll at least get on, get onto a par with you i'll um yeah. but yeah thanks paul